Hello everybody, today we're looking at the Migro 200 Plus kit, which uses the latest and greatest Cobb Grow Light module from Migro. Before we get going, if you're not already subscribed to Migro's YouTube channel, I highly recommend subbing to them because Shane with Migro is constantly churning out top-notch content and has produced reviews on a ton of new lights from his competitors like HLG, Chilled, and all the popular Cobb manufacturers. Now, even though Migro's already created such a big collection of reviews and content, it never hurts to have a third party weigh in on your product, so that's what I intend to do today with this Migro 200 Plus kit. I'll start by showing you what you get in the box. This kit arrived in an unmarked cardboard box and is packaged well. It made its way from Ireland to Canada without any dings or issues. I like that it just uses these foam blocks and there's very minimal, wasteful plastic and cardboard packaging. On one side of the box is one of the lights with the long extension cable attached to it. And after picking one of these things up, my first impression is that these things are very sturdy and really polished. I really like the look of them. In the middle of the package is a set of ratcheting rope hangers for the lights, pretty standard stuff. And there's also a printed copy of the instruction manual, which I did read before hooking anything up. And we'll have a peek at later. Always RTFM, people. On the other side of the box is another light with the driver tucked into it. I was surprised to see that the driver was stamped with a Migro logo, that's a nice little touch. It appears to be manufactured by the Zonin, Zonin, Zonin Power Energy Company in China. The driver arrives with both the input and output cables terminated and has built-in dimming. So that's what you get in the Migro 200 Plus package. A couple sexy looking lights, a constant current driver, ratcheting hangers, and an instruction manual. The Migro 200 Plus is rated to flower at 2 foot by 4 foot or 60 centimeter by 120 centimeter space and the spectrum is listed as full spectrum. This light is suitable for a full grow from start to finish. The Migro 200 Plus has a power consumption of 235 watts and is equivalent to a 400 watt HPS light. Its photosynthetic photon flux, or PPF for short, is rated at 580 micromoles per second. This refers to the number of photons in the photosynthetic range that the light emits per second. In terms of efficiency, this light clocks in at 2.48 micromoles per joule with an efficacy of 174 lumens per watt. These lights are IP67 rated, which means they're protected from contact with harmful dust and they're protected from immersion in water with a depth of up to 1 meter or 3.3 feet for up to 30 minutes, which is a situation I hope you'll never find your micro light in. This is a nice rating to have in a humid and wet grow tent though. Screwed to the 6000 series aluminum body of the light is a borosilicate 90 degree lens that screws down over top of a rubber seal which protects the cob beneath it. The core of these lights is the Luminous Gen 4 CXM32 cob, which just hit the streets a couple months ago. These cobs are about 5% more efficient than their Gen 3 predecessors. Here's what the CXM32 looks like compared to a few other popular cobs of the same class. On the left is a Bridge Lux Vero 29 Gen 7, on the right is a Cree CXB3590, and below is a Citizen CLU058-1825. Migro mounts these cobs using thermal compound and a pair of screws in the corners of the chip. I'm surprised to see that they didn't opt for a cob holder because you can see some lifting of the corners that don't have screws in them, and a holder would probably help to distribute the mounting pressure a little more evenly across the chip to keep better surface contact against the heatsink. I'm not sure how much of an effect this will have on the heat transfer between the cob and the sink, but I'd imagine the surface directly beneath the diodes themselves is making contact with the sink, so perhaps it's not so bad. On one side of the light is a nice molded wire connector. The cable on these things feels really high quality and durable. The connector is a two-pole mating connector that screws onto the feed cable that forms the series connection to the other light, providing a snug, watertight connection with great strain relief. On the other side of the light is a little cap, which I initially thought was a cover for another wiring connection, but it's actually a little breather that will allow gases to pass through it, but not liquids. This lets the air inside the lamp expand and contract without causing condensation. You can see just how much thought has been put into the design of these lights. The stainless steel hanger bars have three holes in them for a variety of mounting options. To attach the included ratcheting hangers, you can just clip it directly into the middle hole in the bracket. If you don't want your lights to spin on you and you want more control, you could either use another ratcheting hanger on each of them, or you could attach them to a rail of some type. 
I think these brackets would work great for fastening these lights to a piece of 2020 aluminum T-slot extrusion. The driver came with a North American style plug terminated on it on the AC side and another of those waterproof threaded connectors on the DC side. The AC cable is pretty short which means you're going to have to have your driver within a foot or so of a plug so you may need to run an extension cord. The cable that attaches to the DC side is also pretty short but you get that 8 foot extension that gives you some flexibility for driver positioning but it would be nice if the AC cable came with an extension of some sort like you see on the HLG kits. On the side of the driver is a built in potentiometer that's rated to dim from 100% down to 10%. I haven't made up my mind yet on whether I prefer the knob style pot you see on this driver or if I like the hidden screw type you see on the meanwhile drivers more. I think it would depend on how the driver is mounted. This is pretty convenient when the driver is easily accessible though. I found that a lot of the products from newer, smaller LED grow light manufacturers tend to lack proper documentation and instructions. This is not the case for the Migro kits, and the manual that comes with these lights is very detailed. It covers everything about the light including assembly, recommended hanging height and potentiometer settings, and even has some PPFD charts. Alright, on to some testing. I had to get creative in order to get my meters into the circuit, but I managed to find a way to do it without damaging anything. I turned up the pot on the driver to 100% and when I first fired the light up I saw a current of about 2.15 amps and got a voltage reading of about 102.2 volts to start for a total of 220 watts on the output side. I could not for the life of me get the kilowatt to show up on the camera but it showed a power draw of 241 watts which meant the driver was running at about 91% efficiency. After running the lights for 12 hours, I checked on them again and found the current holding at 2.10 amps with a voltage that had settled at 101.2 volts after warming up. I attached a pair of thermocouples to the heatsink with one directly above where the cob is fastened and the other off to the side. They read 55.0 degrees and 49.7 degrees Celsius respectively. The driver case measured between 50 and 54 degrees Celsius. Since this kit is rated for flowering a 2 foot by 4 foot space, I did my PPFD testing inside my 2 by 4 grow tent. I spaced the lights evenly in the tent and since the internal dimensions of a 2 by 4 are not quite a true 2 feet by 4 feet, each light was hanging approximately 11 inches off of center which meant there was a gap of about 22 inches between the lights. I measured at a height of 18 inches from the face of the light, not the bottom of the lens but the surface of the heat sink where the cob attaches as well as a height of 13.75 inches. The 13.75 inch measurement is based on Migros recommended hanging height which is 35 centimeters and that translates to about 13 and 3 quarters of an inch. Testing in a grow tent is a good way to get real data for your lights that will reflect their actual performance however you do get a lot of variance in your results no matter how carefully and meticulously you measure and place your lights just due to irregularities in the tent like zippers, folds, slack and creases. For example, when I checked the far right corner, I was getting a measurement that was 10% lower than the far left corner, and these differences were exaggerated with higher PPFD measurements. However, rather than averaging the numbers out, I'm just going to provide the raw data that I measured, but this is why you might see some differences on the sides on my chart. The PPFD chart that you're looking at has two colors of numbers. The blue numbers are for the 18 inch hanging height, and the red numbers are for the 13 and 3 quarter inch hanging height. The lights were spaced as shown here. All measurements were taken with my Apogee SQ500 quantum sensor which is hooked up to my Fluke 287 multimeter. The measurements at 18 inches were quite a bit more even across the board with peaks of about 700 micromoles per meter squared per second towards the center of the space and edge measurements averaging around 500. The corners averaged about 440 micromoles. The average across all measurements at 18 inches was 523 micromoles per meter squared per second. At 13 and 3 quarters of an inch, the centers were quite a bit hotter than the sides with readings of over 1000 micromoles per meter squared per second and the corners dropped off much more than the 18 inch height. With an overall average of 529 micromoles per meter squared per second, the 13.75 inch height was just 6 micromoles higher than the overall average of the 18 inch height. Having done the testing for my particular install, I would run this kit at 18 inches from the canopy of my plants just to get that nice even coverage. I found that the lenses do throw a good amount of heat at whatever is directly below them too, so you may find that you need to back them off a little anyway, 
just to keep your leaf surface temperatures in check. All in all, this is a solid kit. In my opinion, the best thing about them is their aesthetic and their build quality. As I mentioned earlier, these are the nicest looking lights I've seen to date in this space, and everything about them just feels high quality. The design is well thought out, and the end result is an attractive, sturdy, IP67 rated light. Having all the cables terminated out of the box is nice, and setup is simple since you just need to screw connectors together. It may be difficult to run the driver remotely though, as the short AC power cable doesn't leave you with much wiggle room. With a measured power of 220 watts on the output side, in a 2 foot by 4 foot space this gives you 27.5 watts per square foot, which sort of falls short of the typically recommended 30 to 35 watts per square foot. However, the 200 plus kit still puts up respectable numbers thanks to the efficiency of the new Gen 4 CXMs that are on board. That's going to do it for this review guys, do me a solid and hit the subscribe button if you're interested in more DIY LED content, and if you're after more information about Migro, check out their webpage which is linked in the description and be sure to sub to them as well. Until next time.